everyone. Perfect, and good morning to you at home um, and on catch up. I am going to be a little bit interactive. It is, uh, please do not vote because the voting will be closed. Um, so, who in the room would like to smash it in their personal or in their business life? Who would like to smash it? Woohoo! 100% of hands. I love that. So, I, I think, as Ollie said, sometimes when I listen, to the things that are currently going on in my business life, I have to pinch myself because I never actually set out, like a lot of entrepreneurs, to start a business. I was kind of thrust in. And one of the topics that I talk around with large organizations is around change. Um, and I, it was through a, a career that I worked in. I'd worked in a role in corporate sales for 15 years. I won't mention the brand, but it was the leader in its time. It was such an iconic brand that Robbie Williams even mentioned it in one of his songs. It's hard to think now, when we've got the world at our fingertips, that we used to have to look for things in a book. There's a little bit of a clue. Um, but the reason I talk about change is sometimes we change at the wrong time. And I did a, a, a thing recently on the BBC around the timing of change. It's about changing on the way up, not on the way down. So the company I worked with, I was in a room not dissimilar to this, and the CEO took to the stage. We were really excited because we knew that digital was on its way. We knew that things were happening. And we couldn't wait as a company after 15 years for me working for them to see where we were going next. But you could have heard a pin drop when the CEO said, it's business as usual, we're sticking to print, that Google thing will never catch on. He was detached because already the Google thing was taking over. And I, I know we're talking about AI on the panel. Already there's changes in the AI market. So I was left with a choice because anybody that runs their own business knows that to be able to sell it, you need passion and you need belief in what you do or what your product does. The day that you stop to believe in that is the day you can't sell. So that started the journey into entrepreneurship. And I started it because I came from a sales background. I then moved in as a sales training company, which was going really well. But another thing, looking at change, there used to be government funding, which would help that. And then the government pulled the funding. So how do you then run a business when people are really struggling to pay you? Um, so I've, I've got a friend called Lorraine who is my confidant, literally, I pick up the phone to Lorraine, she's my friend from school, and she said, Alison, you're going to write a book, you're going to teach the world how to sell. And I thought, well, that's great, but I left school at 16, I've got no qualifications, I really struggle to read and I really struggle to write. We now know that as the superpower of dyslexia, boom! <laughs> but during that time, I just thought I was a bit thick. So I wrote my first book, Secrets of Successful Sales. And that book, I mean, Ollie will vouch for this because I used to go around networking all the time and I had this book, literally the same copy. It was dog-eared. I went everywhere with Secrets of Successful Sales. It went on holiday. It went on other people's holidays. But that book went on to not only be a number one on Amazon in the UK, but around the world. Um, it was a W.H. Smith top 10 business book, so I was getting the selfies from the train stations and the airports. Um, and it then went on, uh, The Independent voted it one of the top business books written by a woman in 2019. Thank you! Thank you at home, I see you clapping. Um, so if you look at change, we look in our lives, especially in our business, and some of the times, there's a thing that holds us back, which is metathesiophobia. Who can tell me what that is? Look, I even brought a, I even brought a prize. This is the second book. I'm just saying, not just one book I've written, I've written two. Smash it, the art of getting what you want. Metathesiophobia, who can tell me what that is? Yeah, not quite, and it's not, it's not the, um, scared of Facebook either. I get that a lot. At the back. 
Not quite, nearly. Anyone else? Fear of? Change. change. Who said that? When I win a chicken dinner, here we go. I'm going to come down, I'm going to jump off that stage. Hold on. Sorry to the camera, guys. Here we go. I'm not your traditional speaker. I'm running around the room. The fear of change. And again, I don't know if anybody else in the room has got this voice in the, your head. What happens if I do it and it fails? Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not special enough. I'm not clever enough. I'm not pretty enough. That voice that we think is there to protect us is the voice that holds us back from achieving our goals. And your mind, and your, with your mindset. So during this journey, some of you may know me as the entrepreneur's godmother. Literally, that was the brand. And I also had a tiara, I had a wand. I used to go around all the expos with this pink book, didn't I? Tiara, wand. And people would say, well, what does the entrepreneur's godmother do? And I'm like, well, it's a bit double whammy. Like, sometimes I'm there. I had been named like Mavis the Fat Fairy from Willow the Wisp. Well, some of you may remember that, some of you may not. Um, but also sometimes when you're working with entrepreneurs, you have to be quite hard. You have to be quite realistic and quite harsh. So that's like putting the horse head in the bed, the equivalent of the godfather. So it came in two ways, but I loved being the entrepreneur's godmother. I loved wearing pink, but I wasn't making any money. It was really difficult. So I've got a team of people and again, I could continue to do that, walk around with the book and the pink, or I could make a change. And I think this is where looking at a service industry business, because I know a lot of people watching and listening will have service industries. How do you scale that? And again, I had other people that would deliver the training, but everybody wanted me. It became really difficult. So the move then was to become the commodity. And what I discovered was, although I loved sales, loved, I sounded like the past tense, I love sales, because without sales, you don't have a business. Actually, it was eliminating a lot of a market in organizations. So I knew that the money was in corporate businesses. How do you get there? Again, as a service industry, a lot of people say, oh, it's really hard to crack in. But without the belief that you can do something and having that purpose to do it, you're going to struggle. So I can remember going on a course to find out the next direction, thinking about what I was doing. And I literally came out of the course crying because I knew I had a lot of work to do. I had to move myself from talking about sales to properly into personal development which was really hard because I'd never read a personal development book and I'd never, <laughs> I'd never done anything in that space. And what I had to do was strip through, what do I do? There's loads of people that are in business support. There's loads of speakers, there's loads. Every single one of us have got competition. What can I do to do things differently? And that's where really overcoming metathesiophobia, overcoming imposter syndrome, I thought, what would the core, why would they want to hear from me? You remember I saw, said about that voice, I'm not good enough, I'm not clever enough, I'm not smart enough. So I, I got my first, one of my uh, clients, again, as Ollie said, I work with some really amazing entrepreneurs. I, like they are, they're, they're world famous. Um, but I'm sort of behind the scenes with them. And one of them was in the Maserati 100. And I'd gone, I'd gone, and I was probably there that night. And I'd gone to the Maserati and I met this, um, this business and I did some training with them in Twickenham. And I'm on the train, talking to one of the, the delegates that had been there. And about two weeks later, I got a call from the Discovery Channel. And they said, we want you to be our keynote speaker. And I thought, right, okay. And then when I had that conversation, it turns out it's because the woman that I was with on the train who had been at the event, her husband was head of Discovery Channel. So again, I think sometimes you think, I can't do this, this is not going to happen. It's about really having those conversations and just being yourself. You know, we hear about authenticity. What you see with me is pretty much 
what, what you get. So that then led to, as Ollie said, I'm working with some of the biggest brands in the world, Adobe, Amazon, MetLife, uh, the list just goes on. So I think, the, the, you know, the reason for telling you that is to believe that sometimes we don't think we can achieve those goals. Sometimes we think they're about, you know, beyond our reach. I'm from Clyde Bank, which is just outside Glasgow. My mum was a cleaner. My dad worked in the shipyards. I was brought up in a council house. And I didn't start a business until I was 46. Now, again, a bit like Ollie, got the MBE in 2020 for entrepreneurship and business. Um, and now have got two international best-selling books. So it's not about me. It's about your belief that you can do that. So let me give you a couple of snippets from the book. Um, in Smash It, I split it into two sections. So the first section is the me thing. Because a lot of your goals only involve you. I want to lose weight. I want to take up running. I want to do this. I want to do that. All of those things that you've maybe set as a goal. Be interesting. How many people set a New Year resolution? Start of January. Okay, about half the room and half the room at home. Uh, how many people are still doing their New Year resolution? Half of the half. <laughs> and, and how do you carry on? Because it's not easy to make a change, is it? I mean, I think that, you know, we're looking at change and doing things differently to hit your goals. It's always got to be the purpose. Why did you set that goal in the first place and the reason behind that? So obviously I've talked a little bit about the business side, but I had gone through personal changes as well. Um, I was really struggling to walk and I couldn't work out why. So I had gone to the doctor and the doctor said, you've got arthritis. And I said, oh, great, that was really quickly diagnosed. How do you change? How do you, how do you fix that? Well, no, you can't. You've got to change your lifestyle. So I decided to take up running because I watched the London Marathon, right? And I thought, if he can do it in a chicken suit, I can do that. How far is that marathon? 26.1 miles. How far is that on Google Maps? Oh, <laughs> maybe not. And I was at the bet, I put the credit card number in, I was about to press play. Um, but at that time, the Couch to 5K app came up. And I thought, oh, here we go, Couch to 5K, I'll try that. That's going to be easy, isn't it? I mean, everyone can, if a chicken can do a marathon, I can do Couch to 5K. And again, it's the same analogy as when we start our business. Like, I thought, I can do this. And then week one, I physically, in fact, there's people in the room who are in my personal Facebook because I recorded it, not for anything to do with business. I sat on the floor and I cried. I cried and I cried because I couldn't run for a minute. But actually, like entrepreneurship and business, it's not an easy ride. There are times where you'll be sitting on the floor crying and it's what you choose to do next. To me, I repeated week one. Again, and again, and again. I eventually did couch to 5K. I did couch to 10K. I did couch to half marathon and thought I'm definitely not going to be the chicken doing that marathon. I then climbed Mount Snowdon and now I literally, I do boot camp and at the gym and I've changed my whole lifestyle. But the reason that I do that, purpose, I don't want, I've got arthritis, but I want to be fit, I want to be agile, I want to be running around the stage, giving out my books. So to me, when it comes to entrepreneurship and business, it's got to be that, that purpose of why you do it. And I know we're, um, one of the sections is around purpose-led businesses. So I think you know, that's, that's the reason that they do what they do. So if you look at change, um, I want to tell you a wee story about my dad. So I mentioned that he worked on the shipyards and for anybody that knows Glasgow or knows the story of the shipyards, in the 80s, things changed dramatically. The shipbuilding was offshored. The jobs evaporated. The ones that it hit worst were men in their 50s, middle-aged men in their 50s. My dad had a choice with a fixed mindset 
Uh, I'm on the scrap heap. Oh, it's the management's fault. Looking for people to blame. Or you choose to change. In his 50s, my dad went back to night school to learn AutoCAD. So again, we're looking at AI and the changes in technology. This isn't new. There was changes back in the 80s. They might not have been as developed. So we went to night school in his 50s and he got his um, HND in AutoCAD. So while the other people who chose the fixed mindset, the blame, they weren't good enough, they couldn't do it, they couldn't make changes, my dad then went on to be one of the most sought after draftsmen in Scotland and the north of England. So change is possible, but it starts with you. I have been Alison Edgar. Thank you so much for your time. <clears throat> Alison, I've never listened to you and not had a billion questions for you. So that's all right. Thank you um, for keeping it so personal and not being afraid to share the bumps on the way. Hundreds of bumps, Ollie. Have you got a tip for us then? Because even today, I think of you as such a positive person. But when you wake up and you're thinking, I'm just not feeling it today. Yeah. Is there an actual technique you use to say, here's how I'm going to get myself yeah. from zero to one? Yeah, I have. And I think, I think it's interesting because I now work with a lot of big organisations with a lot of staff. And the reason they bring me in is to motivate them. Mm -hmm. Because that Sunday night dread yeah. is real. And I think... People in the entrepreneurial space do have more positivity. Like we go to events all the time and it's buzzing, isn't it? With energy and positivity and belief. But it's not really like that a lot of the time in the real mm -hmm, world mm -hmm. in these organisations. So to me, it's how you start your day, Ollie, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm not going to mention the name of a smart speaker, but I've got one of those. Uh -huh. and, and it goes off in the morning. She goes off in the morning. She says, ah, oh, you're amazing. Really? And then, yeah, you're amazing. <laughs> and then... Know, you program this person. It yeah, may or may not begin with an A. But you start you start off your day going, I'm amazing. <laughs> my smart, my, if my smart speaker thinks I'm amazing, I'm amazing. <laughs> then, <laughs> then the next thing is, because that, that dwindles, because you're still in drowse. The next thing's the music, Ollie. Okay, Literally, it's got to be the music. It was your tune. Today this could be the greatest, <laughs> the greatest day <laughs> of our life. If like you start believing you in the mood. that, you're like in the mood, that's, your mindset's going, okay, see, okay. today, Ollie, this could be the greatest day of my life. I like this. I like this very much. By the way, um, a, a very good friend of mine, if she's ever having a bad day, she goes onto Facebook and sets it as her birthday the following day, wakes up, all the messages. <laughs> Amazing. There you go. Little hack there. Don't say you don't learn anything at Elite Business Life. By the way, here, here's a top tip which I've been known to use, I've got to be honest. Uh, put, put a link to your bio in chat GPT and say reword this in the style of someone who doesn't believe a single word of it and is deeply cynical. That'll get you thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then prompted to say rewrite this bio in the style of someone who's hugely impressed by everything that's been written. That'll cheer you up too. There you go. Little, always so, learning. Uh, I asked mine as well. A smart speaker. Who's Alison Edgar? She is the author of the books. And she knows, like, I've written the books. I'm like, oh, there we go. I know I've made it now, because right. the smart speaker knows all right. who I am. All right. all right, confession time. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not with them, but with ChatGPT. And it was absolutely wonderful, because I'll tell you what happened. They said a few things about me, and they said I had a degree from Cambridge University. Yay. Absolute bullshit. That's but there you right. go. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, forgive me. Scott, that that, that in fits into our AI conversation, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, lo lo lots of questions. Other questions, reflections in our studio, but also online for Alison. Um, I'm just going to come round here and uh, we can take those questions. I see you in the front row there. Feel free to introduce yourself and you don't have to. We'll get a mic down to you right here on the front row. Hi, I'm Garofina. I just wanted to ask you, you said how do you break into the corporate? So what did you do for that? So I started off then with the Discovery Channel. So I think once you've got one under your belt, and that happened because of that conversation and the work that I had done. So you didn't contact any owner? Well, yeah, after that I did, because I had one in. So I, I, I think it helped me overcome imposter syndrome because I used to think, well, why would the corporates want to hear from me? And then I think I believe that everything we do in life is a sale. 
So I think one of my biggest skills is, although I teach people to sell, I'm really good at sales. So I made my hit list. Who are those brands that I want to work with? Mm. And then the great thing, you know, you've got LinkedIn that you can start having those conversations, asking those referrals. But I think having a really strong sales strategy helped me to make those conversations and make those moves in. Thank you. Just, just on that then, Alison, give us a tip. If for whatever reason we're not able to get face-to-face -face for a sales call or meeting, and therefore we're pitching virtually, any tip to get more from those virtual sales meetings that will actually result in a deal, not just another conversation? Don't sell too soon. Oh, the number of times. And we get it in our LinkedIn DMs. We have it in calls. Yeah. And again, um, I know that we've got a really good CRM company coming on stage. Yeah. I had a call not from them, from one of their competitors. And it was as if the salesperson had to just justify their time mm -hmm. and their KPIs. And literally, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do the next thing, I'm going to do... I'm like, I don't care, because you don't really know what I need. Mm -hmm. And you hadn't qualified it. So they were pitching things like £6,000. I was thinking about 60 pence, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was un it was unqualified. Yeah, so, so bad matching in the first place. Oh, bad matching, so unqualified, selling too soon. And I think that's where, you know, comes back to our brain, because if we think, oh, we're in fight flight, what am I going to do? If we are desperate for work, we just pitch in too soon. 100%. 100%. Right, so we'll take some more questions. I see you there. Jane, brilliant. I mean, talk, talk, talk about people that have supported entrepreneurs. Jane, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Ollie. I'm uh, Jane Gomez from The Growth Edge. Um, my question to you, Alison, is a lot of people who work with entrepreneurs say you need a vision and a value, you need values and culture for your business. <clears throat> getting over that imposter syndrome and getting yourself up in the morning, do you have personal values that you live by? And if they are, what, what are they? I think honesty is one of my big values. Um, I think valuing other people's time. So I, I talk about the DISC methodology, so I'm a task-focused extrovert. So everything I do is around time. I've created a system called Alison Edgar's Big Balls. And I talk about basketballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls, and how you manage your time. So similar to Eisenhower quadrant. So to me, it's about me valuing other people's time, but also people valuing my time. Mm. And really looking at a scaling system on, you know, what, what's the output of this and what time frame and things like that. So I think the value for me is time. Um, also respect. I think it's respect in other people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those those are the ones, and we kind of live and breathe them, like especially around customer experience, because I genuinely believe when it's delivered correctly, sales and customer service is exactly the same thing. Right. So prior to sales, I was in hospitality. So it's that that side of the values. Totally, same, same with me. My first job, Disney World. Looking after hey people. Hey there, hi the holder. It's a Disney kind of day. I wasn't taking, taking the mickey out to tell you. Here's a question. Um, your story, Alison, is very inspirational. Jackie asks, I'm a single mum to two teenagers and looking to start my own consultancy business after being in corporate for many years. So very similar to your story. But I don't think I'm good enough. How can oh. I overcome my imposter syndrome? So I think the point that Jackie raises there, first of all, timing is everything. So people say, why did you not start your business earlier? Because I had two kids and I took that as my, you know, that was my pathway. I, I yeah. dedicated that time. And I, I think it's amazing that a lot of females can do that. But I think Jackie's in a prime spot to that. So it's, uh, what I would suggest, when she worked in corporate, there are probably people that absolutely loved everything she did. Mm -hmm. So if you go to them and say, give me three words that you think describes me, yeah. They're going to give you, like, I think you're awesome, I think you're organised, I think you're whatever, you know, whatever it is. And then on the days where you think, well, this isn't working for me, you just read those Revisit and believe those. it. Yep. You have to genuinely, from your heart of heart, believe that you've got this. Because if you don't, you know, it seeps through in everything you do. It's that really belief and the reason why you want to do it that yep. keeps you going. Re really helpful. Right, let's get another couple of questions and then we'll be out of time. We could have drawn on uh, so much and more what you were talking about with Jane uh, there. That's, let's come to the front row here. Eisenhower, not everything urgent is important. Not everything important no. is urgent. Alison Edgar's big balls, yeah. trademarked. <laughs> Alison, obviously we know each other, we're good friends. Tracy Carell from Intrabiz. Obviously I'm all about networking. How important do you think it is to network, to grow your business and your brand? 
I cannot even emphasise how important I think it is. And again, I'd say a big thank you to Tracy because Tracy put me on a stage um, at her events when no one else would put me out there. And it gave me that opportunity to start to grow. Um, as you know, like I've got a lot of um, entrepreneurs that I work with that I've worked with for over 10 years. They're friends. I, I mean, it's, it's a, a different sort of place. But I think one of the things, and I talked to obviously Bernie from Interviz as well, like why would you blend in when you can stand out? So for years I wore pink, now I don't wear pink as much mm -hmm. because it's associated to sales. Mm -hmm. People would see me in that space. So now I'm, I'm the lady in the front and I am matching, we're mm -hmm. twins. Um, so I think for me, it's not just about networking, it's about being memorable and um, really starting to create that wider network. And I mean, I look back at the start of the days, I mean, you had Lord Sugar, you had Grant Cardone, you know, had all these amazing speakers. I would go to events with you, Ollie, I was like, oh my God, Ollie Barrett, he did Startup Britain. Don't be afraid to talk to people. I mean, it's... Well, well let, let me ask you a question on that then, because we talk about authenticity and, yeah. do, you know, I, I'm interested about this thought of when doing something uncomfortable is necessary. Yeah. Do you see where I'm going with that? And, yeah. and the reason I'm asking that is, back to Tracy's question and your answer on standing out. Question here. I'm more of an introvert. I struggle in networking. How can I improve? Now, you could say to this person, do the thing that feels uncomfortable, yeah. or the other Alison Edgar would say, that's not authentic. Well, what I, I see is create the strategy. I'm a big strategist, so I've got a strategy that I talk about in the books called Snog, Marry, Avoid. Okay, okay. okay. So if you're an introvert, it's going to be hard because you'll be like, oh, and, and you won't want to talk. But again, it's knowing your purpose, but knowing who you want to talk to. So if you've done your research, like so there will be people in the room that go, well, I really want to speak to this person mm -hmm. afterwards, then you, you go up and even as an introvert, it's okay. People are genuinely really nice. Yeah. It's, if, but the reason you do it is your purpose. Why do you want to do it? So, so, so for an introvert, is your advice still, I'm, being, I'm oversimplifying here, but is your advice still go and get a bright jacket? Or is that just not for, I mean, I because mean, that wouldn't feel right, but it might work. It might work, but I think it's not even just about standing out. It's about going to speak to the people you want to speak to. Right. So, uh, you know, you can stand out, but sometimes you stand out not for the right reasons. Exactly. We've all met those people, Ollie. <laughs> um, so, but ag again, wear something memorable. It doesn't have to be like a bright jacket, but one of my, one a brooch or a scarf or something. Yep. It's memorable. One of my favourite entrepreneurs, Natalie Campbell, carried a yellow notebook for years at conferences. She said that the yellow notebook triggered more conversations yeah. than anything else I've ever carried in my life. Um, we might have time for a final question if there is one in the studio. Otherwise, we've got some more. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to pause briefly because we had a question this morning which I very much enjoyed. Uh, otherwise, we'll come down to you. I'm just looking around. Final offer. Yeah, please. Once again, is it Marcus? Yeah, Marcus. Um, you talked about motivation and you've got massive energy. But what about discipline? What are your points on discipline when it comes to creating your brand and, and your business? Because we don't talk a lot about discipline. Uh, so I think the discipline comes back again around Alison Edgar's big balls, basketballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls. If you've got that direction and you've set the pathway that you want to go on, that's your basketball. So nothing really takes me off the path. And even from a time, because I think... I think if COVID taught us one thing, life is short and time is precious. It's the biggest commodity that we've got in our life. So that's why you have to have that discipline because otherwise you procrastinate. And, and again, it's all those things when you're starting to come out of your comfort zone. Oh, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Your discipline's gone because you've evaporated the time. Mm. So to me, it's again, having that structure every day like for us one of the things that like we've got an empty inbox policy so not just me my whole team i work with organizations because you come in and you think oh i really want to do that today but i've got all these emails you know it might take you time to clean it down but that's a discipline a daily discipline that we've got everything that we do when we look at where we prioritize is it a basketball tennis ball ping pong ball does it feed the pay plan because ultimately in business, it's, you know, sell more stuff, spend less money, stay in profit, and then you can survive. So that's, a di for me, discipline is massive, but it comes back to mindset. Right. Well, we haven't got more time for your balls yet, Alison, maybe later. But thank you for the food for thought. I think we started uh, uh, to grasp them there. Um, how about 
the question that comes in just very briefly here, because this is a serious problem, right? Yeah. I don't have supportive people around me and it really discourages me. What can I do about that? So I think that's where networking comes into play. Yeah. Like Tracy said, that you find people, and I'm, I'm not a fan of this phrase, but find your tribe. Mm -hmm. But it is finding people. And we look back at the start of my journey, like you were in, you know, the people that were in those rooms at those events. Um, I don't have a mentor, never had. But I can remember pulling Ian Merrick's aside, who is somebody yeah. we both know really White well. White House Capital, brilliant. And Ian I Merrick. said, will you be my mentor? And he went, you don't need a mentor, you just got on with it. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, can you give me some hints? And he went, yeah, what's your target? And I went, X. He said, do you think you can earn X amount a day? And I went, yeah. He says, well, just work 100 days a year at that. And there you go. Toodle off. That's your mentorship. So, again, having those people, yeah. that there are people, every day. Help you, you as fellow travellers, and, and, and exactly yeah. this sort of event that we can meet. Yeah, with. this. Alison, this is perfect. We've been beaten by the clock, so I'm going to ask, will you stay for our next panel conversation? I would love to. Thank you, all. Everybody, please join me in thanking Alison Edgar. Thank you, Alison. Thank you.